Oki Data, Haste Mark 3410. I haven't done a lot of research on this, but uh, since we played around with the old Apple printer, we'll show you what a real printer can do now. This is, from what I understand, also a 9 pin. It's a wide carriage model, as you can tell, it'll fit paper much larger than that. But uh, not too many people even know how to feed these things anymore, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright, so this is set to white paper, so we'll open that up. I'm going to open that up. I already moved its little clamp thingy. I'm going to slide it down. And I'll take some paper. I'll put the holes in there. And come over this way. And get it just so it's taut. You can't go too far with it lock it down. You can't go too far because otherwise you start ripping the holes out and then it misfeeds and that's no good. Now I haven't even powered the printer on. I'm just going to turn the knob manually. We'll also move the uh, paper bale forward. That's nice. It's There we go. It's missing one of its clips but <laughs> let's see where this ends up. Okay, that looks good. Move that back. See where the print head lands. Um, may need to move it over a little bit, so I think we'll try that. So to do that, we'll just back it out where we once were. And just slide over everything a bit. Make sure it's taut. Clamp her down. Like that. Roll it in. That looks good. We'll start there and see what that does for us. I'll run the head all the way to the right. And we'll power it on and see if it actually works. Oh my, there's too much printer here. <laughs> Wow, fans and everything. This uh, probably has a cover switch. So let me get the cover. It's no fun when they have those. Something spun down. Alright, let me play with this and see how to get it going. Okay, now that we have the cover properly installed, the head returns, everything's good, and uh, I think we can hit park, it'll roll the paper out, and I forgot how to do load on it but I'll figure that out. You can move it in micro steps. I know that. So, I'll just leave it right there until I get the hang of it. And uh, now we'll go on to the uh, computer. Well, actually, you know what, before we do that, this one should have a built-in self-test. Usually a whole line feed. I don't know if it's set to wide format or what. Yeah, it's set to wide format, so it's turning on the flatten. Double width, double height, people. Barcodes. Oh, look at this thing go. Look at my 
table move. Wow. That was awesome. Look at the sharpness of the barcodes. That is fantastic. I bet those will scan. I really do. See, this being a nine pin is not letter quality. That's why everything you see here is NLQ, near letter quality. But it does a very respectable job printing barcodes. And uh, pretty nice stuff. Okay, now we have everything set. Here's the generic text-only driver, just so we'll get plain text. And you can see where this printer really shines as far as its capabilities. This is 10 characters per inch in only utility mode, which is generally your standard mode of printing. And then we'll set, we'll do a high-speed draft, that's the HSD, so you can see the difference. Here we go. My, that was nice. <laughs> Let's try high speed draft. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> now the print quality is rougher on that, but we'll try it. it. Looks like the line spacing on this is set to maybe eight car eight lines per inch rather than six, but whatever it is, it is. This is a pretty sturdy table. So here's your difference. That's your regular utility mode. And you can see it's definitely a lot more dotty over here. And uh, just for fun, we'll do Gothic also. Hit that again. Being a 9 pin, it takes double strike on that to produce a little bit nicer looking text. So, not too bad. Certainly looks good. And what the hell, one more. Spool that one up. Click my little button here. And you can see this is a little bit different font. Still pretty quick and looks nicer, but definitely a lot. You know, it takes a lot more time. That's it on 20 characters per inch in Courier. Now we're going to install the correct driver for it and see what it does as far as graphics go. That's going to be a lot slower, obviously, but let's set that up. Okay, got the right driver in. Hit finish. It's going to install that and spool that up. Almost there. Sending the test page. Any time. There we go. There. Ooh. Not quite right. There's a little neck. Yeah, not quite right. Hmm. Well, that has nothing to do here with that. So let me just take a look at the driver in here and see what that's about. So I set this to its higher resolution and it seemed to like it now. 
you can see how long it does actually take to print graphics. Let that finish. Okay, and here is your finished print job in graphics mode. This is 240 by 144 or something. Supercell dithering. The only thing that bothers me is that zero in the upper corner of the page. And I don't know why it is doing that at all. So, could be something with this machine. Maybe I'll just check the BIOS and see what the parallel port settings are just for fun, but I'm not going to be too concerned about that. Um, the interesting thing is that Apple printer I looked at over at Sharky's was printing a zero in the corner also, which would tend to indicate to me that either something with Windows is a little cocktail, but I don't think so, or it's an issue with the parallel port or parallel port settings. So I'll play around with that real quick and we'll try some other stuff. Well, did I call it or did I call it? Look, remember how I said eight lines per inch? This printer doesn't have any dip switch settings, but it does have a built-in menu like this. So I'm gonna go through all of this and restore everything back to factory defaults. There we are. That was the old settings. And here are the new settings, which oddly enough is also eight lines per inch. Okay, maybe it didn't fucking reset. Great. It changed the emulation mode. See? So, I'll adjust everything manually. What the hell prints at eight lines per inch? You only do that if you're looking to save paper, kind of. What the hell? Alright, let me adjust this. Now it's printing the way it's supposed to. I set it back to <clears throat> the proper emulation. And it even has the tear off I set now with the right everything. So that's your medium quality, and I'll print uh, the two others so you'll see, and then we'll compare them. Okay. So that's what you get on the lowest quality, and you can tell some of the characters aren't necessarily well formed. It's readable. I'm losing my stuff here. That's no good. Here's medium quality. I'll compare that for you right here. Low quality, medium quality, and you can see it's darker. See there. Text is a lot more readable here. And here's your highest quality, which for a nine pin printer is about not too bad. You can actually read the Microsoft part, you can't there. And you certainly can't there. It's a lot darker. Also takes a lot longer. But I mean, you know, getting a real close up. That's pretty good. That has got to be pretty good. Printmaster once again. Set to Oki standard driver. I don't know what'll happen. Don't like that kind. See that? It don't like it. That's called a beeper that you heard there. Uh, that would be a driver incompatibility. Oh, dick. Yeah, that's still in the Windows queue. Oh, great. All right, let me play around with this. All in the driver, people set it to, well, it's not quite right just yet. I'll make one other adjustment. And you can tell because before, like, I had an zero screen, and I got a nine. So I sent this to uh, Oki IBM mode, which is not exactly what it's set to. It is set to Oki, Oki mode. I usually set them all to Pro Printer emulation mode, and I'll show you why in a minute. 
But uh, here's the sign to get the idea. It's quite, and it's bi-directional too. You don't see that too often. Uh, a lot of times it, it makes real jaggedy things, so it puts it into a single, single direction. You, you're always best printing graphics single direction, but it does increase the time. Nobody remembers this stuff. It's like a lost art, but I grew up with this stuff, so I have a definitely a soft spot for uh, dot matrix printers. Nice. So certainly not centered on the page in that, but you can print awesome stuff like that with the dot matrix printer, so it's still useful. Yeah. Let's see if we get rid of that nine. We'll set it to the other uh, Oki it's got. Select printer. Uh, we'll go Oki 82. All done. And uh, oh, even worse, it doesn't like that kind. All right, well that was the only one. So now what I'll do is I'll change the emulation to Pro Printer mode. And after I get this out of the queue, oh dick, it's gonna do that. Okay, so I gotta clear that out of the queue. And once I do that, let's see, you gotta watch the wrong stuff. <laughs> that, this is what happens, so yeah, good times. So I'll clear that. I'll set the printer into Pro Printer mode for shits and giggles. We'll give it one last shot in the Oki IBM mode, see if we don't get the 9 there, if it still does. That's why you should have an IBM Pro Printer anyway, and I got a few of those laying around. And it still prints the 9. Oh well, we tried. Big deal. Well, now that it's set to Pro Printer mode... Okay, you heard the beeper before, but here it is, the Bell character character 7 will do that. So when I send that to the printer, because this has the auto tear off and all that, it has to run the paper back and run through a whole rigmarole, but it will beep. There you go. I don't know why I did... Oh, because I had it set with the uh, semicolon. If I run it up and get rid of that. The semicolon keeps it on the same line. Um, actually... Let's do another one. Twice as long. And one more. Uh, and then, whoop, I gotta put a dollar in there. What I'll do is I'll leave the semicolon off the end so it will actually line feed. I did exactly one line or one sixth of an inch. Perfect. I figured out how this works. You hit park and it parks it. I'm just printing on the back side of what I was before. No sense wasting more paper that I don't need. Okay, now let us try load test run. did it. Here you go. 10 characters per inch, double width, superscript, double strike, subscript, same thing in 12 and 17.1. You can see, so you get all that kind of stuff. And then you can do draft quality with the dots. 
and this isn't exactly 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 the same here's double strike a lot cleaner text means like bold faced I wrote this program when I was like 10 and you can't do bold in 17.1 uh, I remember correctly and here's all your high ASCII characters right here so let's do uh, new and we'll load um, the other one pitches run it. Oh, no, it didn't like that. Alright, let's let it finish printing. And then I'll power it off and back on. That may have left it in an inconsistent state. Try again. Printing over the other stuff. Not fully compatible in this way. So we'll run the other one again. It's kind of getting there, but it's not listening to all the codes. That's why emulation was only so good. Only Okies will make that squeak really sickly sound. New load. Test. We're going to run that again, but this time we'll put it in courier mode just for skibbles and bibbles and see how it likes that. You got to. Oh, I got to load some more paper. Okay, now we're all set. We'll try that one more time. strike it's doing there. how good text can be depending on how slow you want it to print of course but it will even do it in the uh, in the courier font on board and some of the later Epson dot matrix printers actually had a, a whole host of different fonts built into the printer and we're just sending straight text to it you could draw all kinds of lines and boxes and shade them in and stuff with those kind of characters you used to be able to do all sorts of awesome stuff that's what four strike looks like there. I know it says double, but it's four. That's bold and double strike. And it has to do two passes because it's only a nine pin and can only do an LQ. Okay, we'll give this one last go with uh, Banner Mania since uh, it's handy. And again, I have chosen IBM Pro Printer because I have set it to IBM Pro Printer mode. And we'll do one pass, and then we'll do two passes, and then three passes. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it won't explode. Oh, it's quick! Woo! Look at that go!
Only Okidata can make such a screechy, squeaky noise. Incredible. I think what I'm going to do is just uh, shove the paper over this way to make it more centered. Here's three pass. We'll do three, then two, then one. This is going to be in the next beat to your next favorite dubstep song. Oh yeah. Then the more harder stuff, you know, for the more hardcore group. And I'm not going to make you sit through all this. I'm going to print all this up and I'll show you. We'll just wait till it hits the next uh, one here. So it gets higher and higher in pitch. We'll come back with the end result. Well, anyway, folks, this is what you're ended up with. I'll show you here. That's one pass, two pass, three pass. And the black is pretty black, is almost black. A little rough around the edges maybe on that. Looking better here. And to print that out. This is obviously single pass, but I'll tell you, that is pretty damn quick. Woof. That was on that was like almost under a minute for two pages. Batter mania. So hopefully you liked this uh, series of dot matrix printers that uh, I've showed you. I have plenty more if anybody's interested in seeing more in the way of dot matrix printers and how they print and I mean it's really all the same folks I'll let you know that but some are slower than others some make other cooler sounds than others stuff like that that one over there is exactly the same as this so there's no point in doing it testing it out but anyway that's all there so if you are interested in more then uh, leave me a comment and uh, we'll see about making a couple of others there, but uh, I want to get a bunch of people involved and like, yeah, I really want to see dot matrix printers, Jay, not just the ones or twos that want to see it. I know it's boring. I like it. But anyway, that's that. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time.